Hello, Thomas here from Train Fully. In this video, I'm going to show you the actual formula that I use with professional golfers to help develop power. This is the same formula that I've used with athletes in other sports as well, football, hockey, soccer, to help them move faster and more accurately. Now, accuracy is the key here, guys. In athletics, power is only useful if you can control it. What I'm going to show you here will give you precision power. All right, so we're going to focus our attention in this video on the king of the golf swing, the gluteus maximus. But my approach to optimizing gluteus maximus, or any other muscle for that matter, is different than most other people in the fitness industry. As a kinesiologist and a human movement specialist, I have to peel back layers and go deeper than other people. Many of my clients are professional athletes, which means they're already exceptional at their sport. And it's my job to make them even better. So I have to exploit every corner of their biology for the purpose of enhancing their athleticism and improving their performance. Because if they don't get better, I'm out of a job. Also, I have to do that without them becoming injured. If they become injured, I'm out of a job. And that's what makes the Train Fully Golf Fitness Program better than the other fitness programs out there. Now, I'm going to show you five exercises. They have to be done in the exact order that I show them to you because each exercise is done for a certain reason, to bring about a specific neuromuscular change. We're building layers on top of layers. Because we spend so much time sitting, the gluteus maximus becomes adaptively lengthened. And when muscles become lengthened, they become inhibited or underactive. So the first thing we need to do is increase the activity of the gluteus maximus because if we don't, and we select our exercise and we think we're targeting the glutes, we won't be. The other muscles around the hips and pelvis, the synergistic muscles to the glutes, will actually dominate the movement. This is called synergistic dominance and it means we're compensating. We don't wanna build and reinforce compensatory patterns. As athletes, we want a foundation of perfect movement patterns. So the first thing we do is isolated activation for the gluteus maximus. For every muscle that we do isolated activation for, there will be overactive synergists that need to be inhibited. Synergists are muscles that are supposed to help the prime mover, in this case, the gluteus maximus, with a specific joint action. But when the prime mover, the gluteus maximus, becomes inhibited, the synergists start to dominate. This is called synergistic dominance. It's not good. It's a compensatory pattern that decreases your performance and sets you up for injury. So with isolate activation, we need a way to inhibit the synergist, and we're going to exploit a neuromuscular reflex called reciprocal inhibition to do that. Reciprocal inhibition inhibits opposing muscles during movement. So follow my cues here really carefully. Get you down on your stomach. The synergist to the gluteus maximus are the erector spinae, which are the muscles here in your low back, your hamstring complex, and the posterior fibers of adductor magnus. So to inhibit the erector spinae, I want you to activate your deep core by pulling your belly button in away from your waistband. And you got to keep your belly button drawn in the entire time. To inhibit your hamstring complex, I want you to contract your quadriceps and keep your knees straight the entire time. Now, the posterior fibers of adductor magnus are adductors. They adduct your hip. So if we abduct our hip, as we extend, we will inhibit the posterior fibers of adductor magnus. So keep your belly button drawn in, keep your knees straight and your quad contracted, extend your hips, squeeze your glutes and slightly abduct. Hold that for four seconds and down. Keeping that belly button drawn in the entire time, your knee stays straight. You're just extending and a slight abduction at the hip. Hold for four and down. Belly button drawn in, quad contracted, knee straight, hip extension, slight abduction. Hold for four and down. We're going to do 20 on each side. All right, now that we have the gluteus maximus activated, we gotta start adding our layers on top. The first layer that we add is the core. It's absolutely essential that we build the coordination or the companionship between the glutes and the core 
in the previous video, we learned about deep core activation. If you haven't seen that video yet, go back and watch that now. So the first exercise was isolated activation. The second exercise is core integration. We still need to be mindful of the overactive synergist. So I want you to set up exactly how I am here. I want your lower leg almost vertical and your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. By being in this position here, we're going to inhibit both the hamstring complex as well as the posterior fibers of adductor magnus. Now to inhibit the erector spinae, all we need to do is keep that belly button drawn in away from our waistband. And what I want you to do is push your hips up until you're at full extension there. Make sure that your hamstrings aren't activated. You see how my hamstrings are still quite soft. They're not contributing at all. That means that the glutes are doing all of the work. I have my belly button drawn in, which means the erector spinae are not involved very much. And we're just rotating around the ball and socket hip joints, okay? So I'm not extending in my low back. I'm just rotating around the ball and socket joints, activating the glutes, squeezing my glutes, checking to make sure the hamstrings are not activated and making sure that I keep that belly button drawn in. Your belly button is going to want to pop out near the bottom. As you lower down, it's going to want to disengage. You got to fight that and keep that belly button drawn in. Okay, so up, check the hamstrings, hold at the top for four seconds, keep that belly button drawn in, and then down for two. So up for two, hold for four, down for two, rotating around the ball and socket joints, keeping that belly button drawn in, 20 repetitions. All right, the next layer we're gonna add is stability or balance. So we started with isolated activation to increase the activity of the gluteus maximus. We then added core integration to build and reinforce the companionship between the glutes and the core. The third exercise is stability integration. Essentially, we're reinforcing the companionship between the glutes and the core while challenging the rest of our lower body to stabilize. This is the single leg touchdown. We're gonna to start on your right foot, second toe pointing straight ahead, right hand on your right hip. You're gonna hold your left foot just an inch or two off the ground. It doesn't float in front or behind the entire time. It stays right below your hip, okay? Now from here, it's really important that we maintain neutral alignment. We put a lot of effort into trying to develop a perfect movement pattern here. We don't wanna start compensating now. So form is extremely important, okay? So keep that chin tucked in, belly button drawn in. You're gonna maintain neutral alignment through your spine. And what we're doing is just gonna rotate around our hip joint as we reach our hand down the inside of our leg, just below our knee. We're gonna hold that for two seconds and then take two seconds on the way up. Again, you're not extending your low back on the way up. You're not flexing your back on the way down. You're just rotating around your ball and socket hip joint, keeping that belly button drawn in, keeping your chin tucked in. So four seconds on the way down. Hold for two. Up for two. Squeeze that glute on the way up. Belly button drawn in. Hold for two for two. Now, the reason I don't want this leg floating back is it's going to activate the hamstring on this leg, which is the overactive synergist we're trying to ramp down. Also, by doing it this way, we're challenging the extensibility of our, S, of our SI joint, in this case, our right SI joint. So again, belly button drawn in, four seconds on the way down, hold for two, up for two, squeeze that glute, Keep that belly button drawn in. 20 repetitions on each side. All right, the next layer on top is speed. We're gonna take the coordination that we've developed with the previous exercises and make it fast. So we started with isolated activation to increase the activity of the gluteus maximus. We then moved on to core integration, which built the companionship between the glutes 
and the core. We then moved on to stability integration, which reinforced that companionship while challenging the rest of our lower body to stabilize. The fourth exercise is reactive activation. We're gonna challenge our gluteus maximus and lower body to stabilize while eccentrically decelerating our body weight against gravity. All right, so I have my feet directly under my hips, second toes pointing straight ahead. I'm gonna place my hands on my hips so that they can't assist me at all. I'm gonna jump off my left foot, landing on the heel of my right foot very softly. I'm gonna stabilize and hold the landing for three to five seconds. So what I'm not doing is when I land, I'm not pulling back and standing up like this. If I do that, I'm not challenging my lower body to stabilize and hold me, and I won't get the effect that I'm looking for. Also, I want you to be mindful of your alignment here. Keep that chin tucked in, keep your spine in neutral alignment, belly button drawn in, hands on your hips, jump, land on that heel, stabilize, hold for three to five seconds. We'll do six to 10 repetitions on each leg. Now, I don't care how far you jump. This is not about the jump, it's about the landing. This exercise is called reactive activation because we're forcing our gluteus maximus and lower body to eccentrically decelerate our body mass against the force of gravity. This is how we increase the firing rate or the speed of contraction of the gluteus maximus. So again, jumping off our left foot, landing on the heel of our right, stabilize, six to 10 repetitions on each side. All right, the final layer on top is power. We're gonna take that coordination and speed that we've developed with the previous four exercises and make it powerful. So we started with isolated activation to increase the activity of the gluteus maximus, then moved on to core integration to build the coordination or companionship between the glutes and the core. Next up was stability integration to reinforce the companionship between the glutes and the core while challenging the rest of our lower body to stabilize. Then we used reactive activation to increase the firing rate or speed of contraction of our lower body. Now we're gonna use plyometrics to increase our power. All right, so plyometric exercises consist of three phases. We have the eccentric phase where we load the gluteus maximus with potential energy, with elastic potential energy. We have the concentric phase where we recover that elastic energy and convert it to kinetic energy or movement. And in between the eccentric and concentric, we have the amortization phase. The shorter the amortization phase, the more elastic potential energy we will convert to kinetic energy or movement and the more powerful we will become. So spend as little time as possible in that amortization phase. So what I want you to do, start with your feet directly under your hips, second toes pointing straight ahead. We're going to have your hands up just above your shoulders and we're going to eccentrically load your glutes by bringing your arms down as you squat down. So we're gonna squat down, load the glutes and then jump straight up as high as we can, spending as little time as possible in the bottom of the squat. And what we're looking to do is land in the exact same spot that we jumped from. You might even wanna take some tape and tape a little square and make sure you stay in that square. So again, eccentrically load, concentrically jump and spend as little time as possible in that amortization phase. We'll do six repetitions. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the formula that I use with pro golfers to help them hit the golf ball 300 plus yards consistently. We start with isolated activation for an inhibited or underactive prime mover, in this case, the gluteus maximus. Then we move on to core integration to build the coordination or the companionship between that prime mover and the deep core stabilizers. Once we've done that, we move on to stability integration. We reinforce that companionship between the prime mover and the deep core while challenging the rest of our body to balance 
or stabilize. Once we've developed that stability, we move on to reactive activation to increase the firing rate or speed of contraction of the prime mover. And finally, we use plyometrics to build power, explosive power. Now guys, this formula was developed over the course of 20 years working with Olympic and professional athletes. Now, if it can improve their performance, if it can take these world-class athletes and make them even better while keeping them safe, imagine what it could do for your performance. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.